Hello and welcome to another episode of Saint Reviews. I'm your host, Marina Hands, and today I will be reviewing Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. This is the rehearsal edition script released over the summer of 2016 and co-written by John Tiffany, Jack Thorne, and J.K. Rowling. Before I get into the review, let me give you a brief summary of the play. The book starts off with Harry, Ron, and Hermione's children going off to Hogwarts. Harry Potter's son, Albus, is sorted into Slytherin and makes friends with Scorpius Malfoy, Draco Malfoy's son. While working as an Auror for the Ministry of Magic, Harry confiscates a time-turner and is pressured by Amos Diggory to use it to go back in time to save his son, Cedric. Harry refuses, knowing that messing with time never works out the way you plan. Meanwhile, Albus begins to have difficulties at school, causing him to argue with his father, who is already strained by his fight with Amos, and suddenly reveals that he sometimes wishes Albus wasn't his son. This leads Albus to go behind his father's back and promise to help Amos Diggory by stealing the Time Turner from the Ministry of Magic. That night, Harry's scar begins to hurt for the first time in 19 years. Albus tells Scorpius about his plan to bring Cedric back, and Scorpius agrees to help him. After they steal the Time Turner from the Ministry, they go back in time and sabotage Cedric in the first round of the Triwizard Tournament. Albus and Scorpius return to the present, and the next day, they discover that the world they knew has changed. Ron is married to Padma Patil, Hermione is a teacher at Hogwarts, and Albus is in Gryffindor. The boys are then informed by Amos's nurse and relative, Delphi, that although the history books were changed, Cedric still died in the tournament. Albus and Scorpius decide to go back in time again, this time to sabotage Cedric's second round. When the Time Turner brings them back to the present, Scorpius can't find Albus. Headmistress Umbridge informs him that Harry Potter was killed during the Battle of Hogwarts, meaning that Albus would not exist. Scorpius goes to Severus Snape, who is still alive in this reality, to ask for help. They use the Time Turner to go back to the Triwizard Tournament for a third time, and Albus is prevented from casting his spell on Cedric. When Scorpius returns to the present, Albus is there with him, and the world is returned to normal. The boys then ask Delphi to, to tell Amos that they can't save Cedric without causing Harry to die and Voldemort to rule the world. Delphi seems a little too interested in this scenario, making Scorpius decide that the, the Time Turner needs to be destroyed. Delphi agrees, so Scorpius hands it to her to destroy it since she knows more powerful spells than he or Albus does. As Delphi admires the Time Turner in her hand, Scorpius notices Delphi's tattoo, and she decides to reveal the truth about her past. She is not a relative of Amos's, but instead comes from a family of Death Eaters. She forces the boys to travel back in time with her, threatening to kill them if they resist. Her plan is to humiliate Cedric, which ultimately helps Voldemort rise to power, and kills Harry for good. Once they arrive in the past, Delphi destroys the Time Turner, preventing it from taking them back to the present. Albus and Scorpius discover that they have been transported to the day that Harry's parents died. Delphi aims to stop Voldemort from attempting to kill baby Harry, which would save him from the rebounding curse that, in another reality, caused him to die and a piece of his soul to attach itself to Harry. From this reality, Albus and Scorpius manage to send a message to Harry in their original reality with the date in which they are stuck. Harry, Ginny, Draco, Ron, and Hermione travel in time to that date. Harry transfigures into Voldemort in order to distract Delphi, who then explains to Harry, as Voldemort, that she is the child of an affair between Voldemort and Bellatrix Lestrange. The transfiguration begins to fade, and Delphi realizes it is Harry. She attacks, but Albus helps his father to, to beat Delphi, and not a second too soon, as they hear the real Voldemort arrive to kill Harry's parents. The group cannot intervene or else they risk changing the future, so Harry has no choice but to watch as his parents are murdered in front of him for the second time. This does the trick, setting the present back to the way it was before Albus and Scorpius went traveling through time, and everyone learns a valuable lesson about meddling in things beyond their control. Now, if you were thinking that all this sounds like a bad fanfic, then you'd be right. As I was reading this, I was increasingly disappointed by the cheesiness of the plot and the been there, done that feeling I got when the Time Turner was introduced. I, truly, I am truly shocked and saddened that J.K. Rowling would allow the recycling of so many plots from the original series. 
I mean, seriously, she couldn't have come up with an original story after all these years. I blame the playwright and the director that she co-wrote this script with. Their input has made the script sound more like a personal tribute to the series rather than the extension of the original story, which Rowling claims that this script is. J.K. Rowling has put her support behind this script, calling it the eighth and final chapter to the Harry Potter saga, but I don't accept it as such. For me, this is nothing more than someone's random idea of an alternate ending. You know, those things that movies sometimes include in their bonus features? Although my respect for Rowling has wavered a bit after the release of this script, I do have to say that, in all honesty, I enjoyed reading about the characters in my favorite series again. However, I do not in any way consider this to be an official conclusion to the seven-book set. As far as I'm concerned, the epilogue of the Deathly Hallows was the official ending with Harry, Hermione, and Ron finally getting to live their lives in peace as they watch their children go off to Hogwarts. So to wrap up my commentary, here's my final opinion. If you're a die-hard fan of the series like I am, I say read it. It's a fun, quick read if you want to relive the world of Harry Potter in a shorter format. Now, if you've never heard of Harry Potter, I say, eh, don't bother. Go read the original seven books instead. The plots are much more creative and entertaining, plus you don't have to keep track of all those alternate realities. Well, that's all the time I have for today, but thanks for watching and make sure to stay tuned for our next episode of Saint Reviews. See you then.